What's going on, Husker fans? Ethan Bice for us, Lincoln. Glad to have you here with me. Uh, if you forget, please uh, like, share, and comment um, on my show here. Um, got a big one here for you today as uh, kind of doing a midweek again uh, to go over the tennis action and then the Badger Invitational uh, for the men's golf team. Um, so without further ado, the women's ten tennis team has entered the HEB invite in Baylor um, before they attended the ITA All-American along with the men, which we'll get over, go over that here in a second. Um, at the Baylor invite, the Huskers kicked off competition in Texas with doubles play on Friday morning. The doubles duo of Maria Terranova and Jillian Roa defeated Denver's Carson Evans and Anastasia Simnov 6-4. The pairings of Anfisa Danilchenko and Lucy Lloyd Lancas and Androver Gallego Maha Petra Woods. My God, the names are horrendous. And Anna Zimbrick uh, competed in battle but lost their respective matches. Nebraska then started singles play with newcomers Maria Tarovova and Petra Wicks, winning their first singles matches as Huskers. Additionally, Roe, Androver, Lacasse, and Sambruik all won their opening matches while Denel Checo and Lloyd dropped their matches. In Saturday's double play, the Huskers tallied two wins and two losses in the second day of competition at the HEB invite. Roa and Zambruek and Loy and Tenerova defeated Lamar in the opening match before Baylor defeated the pairs of Lacasse and Gallego and Daniel Chenko and Petrowicz. In singles play, NU earned four wins and four losses, including two notable victories as Roa and Loy tallied to two three-set victories. Sunday marked the final day in Texas as Nebraska went 3-0 in doubles play and 5-1 singles competition. Um, overall, they uh, finished 15-6 and in singles and 9-10 and in doubles play against Lamar, SMU, Baylor, Denver, Tennessee, and Missouri. So that's how the HEB invite went. And then we're moving on to the um, ITA All-American which nobody really did great, but uh, here for a second show, I'll go over what happened. Uh, so on the men's side, senior Shunya Marioma reached a singles round of 64 for the second year in a row, defeated Stetson's time Guinness in three sets in the second round of uh, 128, defeated Hugo Samaron of Kennesaw State in three set, straight sets, and around the 64, he lost to Middle Tennessee sophomore, uh, no, sorry, Middle Tennessee State's Andrej Hovac. Uh, sophomore Leo Linquet in around a 256 defeated Martin Vergara del Porto of Arizona State, but then fell in the round of 128 to Vanderbilt's Juan Lopez de Azcana. Junior Anton Shep appeared in his first tournament as a Husker, played in both doubles and singles. In the singles round, he fell to Wake Forest uh, Jameson Nathan. However, in his consolation match, he defeated North Carolina A&T State's Esteban Lopez. Uh, sophomore Lars Johan also competed in singles and doubles play. In his opening singles match, he fell to Liberty's Luis Felipe and also fell in his consolation match to Baylor's Martin Brazak. In doubles play, Johan Shep fell in the first round to Illinois' Lucas Horv, Oliver Okinawa in a tight match matchup. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce names. Up next for the men, they will travel to Stillwater, Oklahoma for the ITA Regional Tournament, which starts October 12th. And then on the women's side, Rafael Lacasse and Isa Androver Gallego had a good run in the ITAs in the first round, defeated Virginia's Sarah Zayota and Margaret Navarro in the round of 32. The pair defeated Portland's Iva Zelik and Sally Pettybridge to move on to the round of 16. Uh, the pair defeated TCU's Destiny Martins and Isabel Pascual 
to move on to the main draw where their run ended against North Carolina State's Amelia Rajecki and Maddie Zampard. Um, up next for the ladies, they will travel to Lawrence, Kansas for the ATA Regionals on October 12th through 16th. Um, so that wraps the tennis things up, uh, which, okay. <laughs> um, the Badger Invitational for the men's golf, men finished sixth place. So I'm continuing to read off the athletics website due to the fact that I can't really follow up golf action, neither tennis. Uh, two sports are hard to follow. You can't really watch it on TV and give your own personal notes. So I basically read these off the athletics website. So without further ado, on that, with the men uh, placing six at the Badger Invitational, uh, Quinn Yost put together three consistent rounds for to tie for ninth in a 90-player field and lead the Nebraska men's golf team to a sixth-place finish at the Badger Invitational on Tuesday. Uh, Yost, a sophomore from Farmington, New Mexico, closed the best tournament of his young career with a 71. That's one under par on the 7,271-yard layout at the University Ridge Golf Club to close with a career best three round total of 212. His performance included a career best tying 69, three under in Sunday's opening round before adding an even par 72 on Monday. Yost's previous collegiate best came with a 222 at the William H. Tucker Invitational at his home state in New Mexico last season. So looks like he uh, improved significantly since last year. Um, with Yost leading the way, Nebraska finished six in the 18-team tournament with the 860, including a final round of 295. The Huskers finished just nine strokes back of the tournament uh, champions from Florida Gulf Coast. Florida Gulf Coast edged Illinois State and Middle Tennessee by just one stroke, while Long Beach State and BCU closed three shots back to of the leaders at 8.54. The 18-team Badger Invitational field, uh, field featured six 2023 regional qualifiers, including Illinois State, Middle Tennessee, and Long Beach State which finished ahead of the Huskers in the final standings. Nebraska finished ahead of Marquette, Northern Illinois, and hosts from Wisconsin, which all qualified for the postseason one year ago. Hamish Murray added second straight top 20 individual finish for the Huskers, tying for 19th at 215, which is one under. Uh, the junior from Sydney, Australia, managed a 74 on Tuesday after carding rounds of 69 and 72 over the tournament's first two days. Fifth year senior Will Marshall tied for 43rd at 218 but settled for a 77 after struggling over nine, uh, nine holes on Tuesday. Junior Harry Crockett finished just one shot back of Marshall at 219 and a tie for 45th after a 73 in the third round. Senior Reed Malik rounded out the Husker contingent with a 222, including a final round 77. Malik tied for 58th. South Alabama's Joshua Hill won the individual title with a 54, whole total of 208, including a final round 67. At, uh, Florida Gulf Coast's uh, Austin Cherichella in Middle Tennessee's Owen Stamper tied for second at 209, just one shot back of Hill. The Huskers will be back in action at the Purdue Fall Invitational in West Lafayette on October 9th. Uh, so that does it for the golf side of things. Um, so now uh, we will preview what's to come for this week. So let's go over what everybody really is here for, for the football game uh, against Illinois, which is tomorrow night. Uh, God bless us. Um, not much to say for a prediction. Uh, it should be a winnable game. I say it should be winnable. 
anything can happen. Either we just lay flat or uh, we actually go out and play and beat a team we should. Um, I don't know. I it, It's hard to tell at this point. The Big Ten West is garbage, and Illinois has not impressed me. Even with the coach, Brett Bielema, who's been there for, what, two, three years now? Um, who is actually a good coach. And so, I don't know. I can't ever overlook a uh, Coach Bielema team. But at the same time, Illinois just has not looked that good at all. And I haven't had time to look over their rosters. I, you know, I've been at the funeral uh, yesterday, so it it's really hard to uh, tell who we're going up against in general. So it, it's been a long week, guys, so bear with me on that. But, um, yeah, it should be a winnable game. If we win this game, we're one step closer to a bull bid. And, you know, if we win this, I do have hopes for a bull bid. Um, so we'll see about that. Uh, the L the Illini are 2-3 and three overall, and yet to get a conference win with the Huskers being in the same boat, not getting a conference win. So somebody's going to come out of this game with a conference win finally. Hopefully it's us. Um, we'll see. The key for this game is for our defense to basically be our offense, you know, to keep us in good field position. You know, it's going to be a field position battle. Um, the the run game should be easily defended, which should force Illinois to pass. And I I do expect a low scoring game. I don't know about you guys. I mean, because our offense sucks, uh, and quite frankly, our quarterbacks are running for their lives almost every single play. You know, and it seems like the plays on the set, it it all starts with the snap. You know, we always have somebody blown by our. Uh, offensive linemen, especially at that left side. And I ain't going to point out names, but I think everybody knows who I'm talking about. And my God, uh, if you, if you got to chop block somebody, do it. I mean, protect your freaking quarterback for crying out loud. Um, I don't know. I, I can go on a rant about this offensive line play. Um, and I, I really don't expect Coach Royola to be there much longer. We couldn't even re, uh, reel in his nephew. Um, but I don't know. Uh, some freakish things happen, but our offensive line play is horrible and a terrible anchor on this team, to be quite honest. Um, I, hate, I hate calling people out, but it, it's getting ridiculous. And I think us as fans are fed up with it you know I have never seen so many quarterbacks scramble for their lives and that probably is why Jeff Sims so damn nervous when he snaps a ball because he knows he's got to go like he, when he gets a ball he knows he's got to move because he knows he's going to run for his damn life because our offensive line can't hold shit so I, I'm on a rant about that these, I mean, a lot of these guys have been here for, I don't know. Not, I mean, isn't our offensive line, like, the most senior group on this team? I don't know. But it, it's got, it's pretty lousy, you know. Um, I don't know. Hopefully when they play Michigan, they learn some things. I, I don't know. But, uh, I don't know. I could be eating my words and we can have the best offensive line performance ever this week or tomorrow. So, um, but as long as we're not committing turnovers and penalties and all that junk, you know, I, I should say this, less of them this game. We should aim for not having any at all. Uh, I know penalties are going to happen. We can fix the turnovers easily. Um, but, you know, if we limit those mistakes, this should be an easy win. You know, just like Matt Rule says, go out there and play football. So, um, but, yeah, we all remember last year's drubbing of 26-9 to 9 when, yeah, Illinois just 
wailed our asses. We gave up. You can tell we were done that season after that game. Like, it, it was just over. Um, but, yeah, hopefully we can change the chapter in this series and get a win. And, you know, it it all starts with winning, right? So, um, anyway, so that's my football preview. I, you know, sorry I ain't got much about it. You know, this team, you just don't know what you're going to get out of them. Uh, you know, we know we can't pass. We can't block. Uh, you know, our defense, I mean, our defense looked silly against Michigan. You know, I thought we were going to do much better against Michigan, but they, they made us look silly. And, uh, but, you know, who say we ain't the best defense in the Big Ten West. All right. So maybe maybe we're the best defense in the Big Ten West. Definitely not in the Big Ten. But in the West, uh, you know, it, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know where I'm going with this. But uh, uh, it, as long as our defense performs like they have the past games besides Michigan, we should – be fine. We should win this game. But, you know, so two things can happen after a loss. Either you learn and you get better, or you take that as a loss and you don't do shit about it and you hang your head and cry like a baby. You know, two things have, I mean, you, you have two options after a loss. You either fold and you know, feel sorry for yourself or you take it with a grain of salt, learn and get better. So those are your two. So which route are, is this team going to go after a beat down by Michigan? Okay. So two, we can go two ways. So I guess we'll see tomorrow. Um, other than that, you know, I ain't got much for uh football preview. So let's move on. Uh, so, Tomorrow as well, uh, I mentioned the uh, winter sports crossover. Um, uh, swimming and diving have an intra squad meet. Uh, so basically, you know, just a meet within the team. So uh, should be fun. Should see. I mean, if you're a big fan of swimming and diving, uh, want to see where this team goes, uh, check that out. I don't know what platform. I didn't look, but. I'm sure it'll be on YouTube or something. Um, so let's uh, move on to, well, let's talk about rifle as well, uh, since we're talking about winter sports. Um, no, that'll be for my uh, winter preview. Let's leave that out of it. Okay, so let's talk about the volleyball game tomorrow and on Saturday. So uh, everybody's disappointed volleyball it's going to be around the same time as football. And, uh, but if you're like me, you'll have like one on the laptop and one on the TV. Um, you know, and probably to be honest, I'll probably be more interested in tuning into the volleyball game just because what has football given us to cheer about lately? Uh, sorry guys, but that's just where you put us. So, um, yeah, so we, we got a big match against Michigan State tomorrow, and, um, you know, I'm not going to look past them. Uh, they've been looking pretty decent here lately. Uh, got, I think they got two wins in a row now in the Big Ten. Um, and, of course, it's going to be at Michigan State, so uh, another Big Ten road test. Um, have somebody parked out there. I don't know who that is, but, uh, yeah. It's going to be a, a tough road test, I think, uh, more than what people expect because uh, you don't know what to expect in the Big Ten. Um, but, yeah, I mentioned it, it's the same time as the damn football game pretty much. Um, but hopefully if we just get a sweep, we don't miss much of a football game. So I'll put it that way. Um so yeah, Michigan State is eleven four, uh three and one overall in the conference. Uh 
And I think Leah Johnson's a pretty decent coach. Uh, I don't know how long she's been there, but, uh, you know, she's good. I, I know Michigan State hasn't been the top-notch school, like, team in volleyball in my recent memory. Um, but they're, they're kind of catching my attention. Uh, got some pretty decent players on their team. Um, oh, and also this week, uh, Merritt Beeson, Bergen Riley, and Harper Murray all received Big Ten honors for the week, so that's really cool. Um, Michigan State is hitting 256 on the season and allowing opposition to hit 173s. Uh, so both those stats rank fifth in the Big Ten. Um, so yeah, they're 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 pretty solid. They're a pretty solid hidden team. I mean, so are we. We're very solid, obviously, but they seem to be able to disrupt teams as well. So um, yeah, you just can't really look past this team. I haven't really looked at who their big players are. I mean, I watched them a few times. I'm just horrible with names, but. I think uh, they'll actually give us a game. It could be a four-setter, in my opinion. Uh, and then on Saturday, we play Michigan. And, you know, they say not to overlook teams. But, you know, a team with a 2-11 and record, 0-4 in Big Ten, with a first-year head coach, I'm really not worried about this one. Um, I mean, of course, teams get better. And it seems like they always – get better when they play Nebraska in anything. That's just how it goes, it seems like. But, I don't know. Looking on paper, it just does not look like anything to worry about at all. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, Wolverines are hitting 171 this season while opponents are hitting uh, staggering 242. So, it's pretty lopsided. And, of course, when you get a first-year head coach, you know, just like Matt Rule, he's building something, trying to build, you know, and it's going to take losses. That's just how it goes most of the time when you're a first-year head coach. Um, but uh, one interesting thing is I did not know this, but Harper Mur Murray's older sister, Kendall Murray, plays at Michigan. So that's pretty cool. I didn't know she had a sister or sibling that played volleyball at all so um but makes sense uh knowing harper murray's from ann arbor uh not only makes sense that her sister went to michigan so uh, pretty cool we reeled harper away i mean who knows what kind of team michigan would be if she was at michigan and hopefully we can convince her to stay at nebraska and not transfer or anything uh Hopefully that won't be too much of a challenge at all. So I'm interested in seeing how Kendall Murray plays, like see if she's uh, got the same play style or whatever. So um, that'll be pretty cool. Um, so I previewed swimming, volleyball, football. Uh, of course, from third, uh, so Saturday, softball has a doubleheader against Kansas City, South Dakota State. Then they play Creighton on Sunday. Baseball plays Cloud County Community College on Saturday. All fall ball, so I'm not going to even really get into that at all. Um, as it is fall ball, it, nothing counts. It's not the spring, so uh, I'm just laying it out there that that's happening this weekend as well. So mainly the last thing to talk about is the soccer game on Saturday that uh, we only had one game this whole week. So um, pretty decent break for our soccer team, I think, uh, because they've been playing hard and going through some rough shit. Um, <clears throat> But the NCAA released a new batch of RPA, RPI rankings in which the Huskers are ranked 24. So we're still in that 64 range, which is great. 
better than great. I mean, 24th. So, I mean, we're still pretty respected. I don't know, uh, like in the big USA W whatever ranking where we're at, but the RPI is really what matters anyway. So, uh, 24th in that, I'll consider us the 24th ranked team in the country. It sounds fair. Uh, since we haven't even had a ranked win yet this year, which uh, we we can come so close to it, but uh, needless needless to say, uh, we're doing good uh, overall and should get a NCAA berth and hopefully a strong finish in the Big Tens. Um, the strong fan base continues to be strong as we rank 21st nationally and fourth in the Big Ten. Hopefully that number moves up. Uh, yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, Eleanor Dale has received her third Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week honor this year and continues to lead the country with goals scored 17 and six game winning goals. She also leads the conference with 76 shots, 35 on goal, and points with 36. Sarah Weber is second in the conference with 58 shots and 25 shots on goal. She is looking like her old self like I saw last year and should have a great game against Iowa. Uh, and we enter the week uh, tied for third in the Big Ten standings. So we're up there. We're in the top three. So um, I think, yeah, at least have to be in the top eight to be in the uh tournament and I think the top four get a bye I can't remember but I think that's how it works I could be totally wrong about that but top three is a great position to be in though regardless um so on the other side of things uh for the Hawkeyes uh they're eight and one three overall with a record of two one and two in the big ten the hawkeyes are rolling hot after shutting out rutgers and purdue combined for five to nothing against some teams so they're rolling i mean they're looking like what the nebraska did uh to end the season last year uh so they're they're gonna be a team that nobody wants to play and hopefully we uh decide to kick their ass on senior day. It, it is senior day, so we, we need this win. Um, but we do uh, own the overall series, 11-4-1, so that's awesome. So regardless if we lose or win, you know, we still own them overall, which is great. It's nice owning Iowa and anything, to be quite honest. Uh, so the Iowa players to watch out for, uh, number 28, Kenzie Rowling with a team high of three goals and five assists. Uh, you got number 23, Eliado with three goals and one assist and goalkeeper Macy Inneking who has recorded 32 saves. So yeah, I mean, we're going to have our hands full on senior day, but I mean, that's the usual norm for Big Ten play, so we should be ready to go, uh, especially after that Northwestern, uh, Northwestern win we had. We should be, you know, feeling good ourselves coming into this thing. Um, so with that, guys, um, that's what's coming up this week uh, for, well, for Thursday and Sunday anyway. I. There is stuff like immediately like Monday and Tuesday and stuff, but it's like golf and tennis. So I can cover that over my midweek or whatever, or on my show on Sunday. Um, so with that guys, um, that covers everything for what I need to now to get into winter sports. So the first one I'm going to mention is swimming and diving since I mentioned them on the lineup for the week. Uh, they do have their intra-squad schedule come, uh, meet uh, tomorrow, which will be interesting. Um, and I don't know if any of you knew this, but we used to have a uh, men's swimming and diving team. Uh, which was actually pretty decent. We dropped them for 
I think some allegations and whatnot. So that really sucks because we had a decent team and numerous like conference championships and stuff. It disbanded in like 2001. So it, we were still in the big 12 then, but we still have women swimming and diving, of course, uh, you know, cause we're pretty popular with women's sports around here. But, uh, um, Whenever I do like a season uh, preview, I like to read off uh, the team achievements. So with that, 149 individual conference championships, 10 conference championships, 10 conference runner-ups, 23 NCAA top 40 finishes, 10 NCAA top 40 finishes, and 4 NCAA top 10 finishes. So a lot of fun history there. Um, after the October 6th intra-squad meet, uh, the team will travel to Minneapolis on October 13th for a double duel against Minnesota and South Dakota. Last year, the team went 6-3 and three overall with the 2-2 two and two conference record, finishing 10th overall in the Big Ten. Uh, this year, the team is hoping to finish better overall in the Big Ten standings. Gina Jorgensen enters her sophomore year after being the best individual finisher in the postseason, breaking the school's mile record. And uh, Coach Pablo Morales enters his 22nd season as a head coach, so he's been there for a while uh, and has a pretty good bulk of uh, accolades for the Huskers. Um, so with that, not, not much more to say on the swimming and diving side of things. Hopefully we, uh, continues, uh, you know, all the successes from past seasons. Um, now we got, uh, Rifle, uh, who I forgot to mention was in the, uh, lineup of things to come this weekend. So let me, uh. So they're ranked number six in the preseason rankings after finishing six last year in the NCAAs. Uh, this, um, so they actually uh, shoot against Ohio State on Saturday, um, which I've never seen our rifle range, but um, hopefully someday I will. Actually, when I went to, I'm getting off track here, but when me and my wife went to Colorado in June, we visited the uh, Olympic Training Center and we got to see the rifle range in there, which was really cool. You know, you just had this big room with all these targets and stuff. And you actually had a few ladies in there uh, shooting, just practicing or whatever. So it was really cool. Uh, rifle's one of those sports that I think, you know, after a while can actually be a big thing but I watched uh, the national championship last year on YouTube so it's not really got that much attention I think Alaska is like the top dog when it comes to rifle which makes sense um, but yeah so on Saturday we'll shoot against Ohio State uh, we're not in the Big Ten in the rifle by the way we're in the Patriot Rifle Conference so um, and I think Ohio State's in that. I'm not sure, but um, it'll be the first of 12 season matchups for the Huskers, uh, eight of which will be during the fall and four being in the spring, along with the um, PRC championships and NCAA qualifiers and slash championships. So, yeah, it it's one of those sports that kind of revolve with the spring crossover. Uh, it's kind of a long season. Um, six shooters return for the Huskers, including the national champion and small bore, Cecilia Aussie. So, yeah, she won a national championship for us last year in small bore. So we're hoping she continues her success uh, here. Um, it's pretty exciting stuff. Um she was also a CRCA first team small bore All American, second team air rifle All American, and third team aggregate All American in 2023. Um, 
and over the summer, she also won a USA Shooting Small Bore Championship in the CMP Small Bore and Air Rifle title. So maybe she can get us both an Air Rifle and Small I mean, she's, she's really good. And um, one interesting thing about her is I think she was a gymnast before she started shooting. So like, Seems like whatever she does, she's very successful at. So um, I'm very happy for her and hoping uh, to see w what she brings us this year. Um, Emma Rhodes and Victoria Watts also returned. Both women are CRCA second team air rifle All-Americans. Madeline Erickson also returns as, as a senior after being named a CRCA honorable mention in the small bar. So... Hopefully, uh, she finishes her college career out strong. And then you got Camelia jo Johansson, Johannesson, and Mackenzie Strauch, who returned to contribute to the season. Um, so, yeah, a lot of exciting stuff in the uh, rifle thing. Uh, Mindy Miles is in her third year as a head coach. We already had like four or five head coaches in rifle and it's short history. It hasn't been around that long. I want to say like since 2012. So it's, I think it is the newest sport at Nebraska. And um, we're starting to build something. Uh, one conference championship, two conference tournament championships, and 16 NCAA championship appearances. So, um, I mean, we're not, like Alaska good, but uh, we're starting to build something in the rifle department. I just know it. So with that, um, we'll go to bowling, which we have won 11 national championships. Uh, we're ranked number three in the preseason poll, of course. Uh, we're, we're just a uh, blue blood in women's bowling. I mean, that's all there is to it. Uh, with 11 national championships, I mean, can never really count us out, you know, for the season. Uh, but the season does open up on October 12th at the Motive Penguin Classic in Youngstown. Um, so with that, I'm just clearing my thing here so that way I don't talk about it twice. Um, but while I do, what what are your guys' uh, what are you guys uh, looking forward to in the winter? Is it basketball, wrestling? I mean, let me know in the comments. Um, which I will get to. I'll get to the more fun sports here in a minute. I I kind of like to start with the sports that nobody cares about, so maybe they can stay tuned to for me to talk about them more. So. Uh, We'll go in the gymnastics side of things. Um, starting with the men, we have nine individual round national championships, uh, 15 conference championships, 27 national championship appearances, and eight national championships. Um, in the, the gymnastics round, we haven't even released the schedule yet. It, it tends to start later in the winter, but um, hopefully, uh, they'll get that up soon, and we'll know. Um, and last year, Taylor Christopoulos was just, he was a bad mofo. Um, I don't know if we get him back this year or not. I, I am not certain, but I know he was the powerhouse, uh, the top guy of this team last year, and basically the heart and soul. So um, I'm not, I mean, the, Site has him as a senior, but I don't know if that's from last year or the uh, this year. So hopefully we get him back because I think good things will happen with him. But if not, you know, it is a team with eight national championships. I think we'll figure it out. So, um, yeah, we uh, finished, what, fifth, sixth last year in the nation. So, I mean... You know, we're always up there, and but there's only like 20 teams that have a men's gymnastic team, like in Division One, so not very many. 
So uh, I guess in gymnastics, you always got a shot. Uh, I know OU is a big time program as well. Uh, so for the women's side, uh, five individual around national championships, one conference championship, 23 conference meet championships, and 23 NCAA championship appearances. Um, and like I said, that uh, this year's team is uncertain. They haven't even released the media guides for any of these teams, so I don't really know what to expect. Um, but I, I just know both teams do really well every year, and we'll follow along as it goes. Um, so now let's move on to the track and field side of things. Let's start with the men. Uh, as they have 37, uh, and this all indoor track, so this ain't outdoor. It's separate. Um, 37 indoor conference championships. Uh 18 individual national champions and 274 individual conference titles. Uh, last year, the men went won the Big Ten uh, under first year head coach Justin St. Clair, and they did it mostly in the field events, um, which is good. Uh, you got some pretty decent talent uh, coming back. You got Mason Connor and uh, with the throws and Darius Love with the hurdles. Uh, and he's only a junior, so we get him two more years. And he, he actually, gosh dang, what did Darius Left get last year? I forgot, but he, he was really good. And so I'm excited to have him back this year. Um, so, yeah, uh, expect big things out of track and field. I think Justin St. Clair is going to do a good job with this team, and it will be exciting to see, uh, watch him continue his success. On the women's side, uh, so overall we had three national championships, yeah, um, 16 ind individual national champions, 189 individual conference champions, and 25 in the, uh, indoor conference championships. Sorry, I'm losing my train of thought here. Um, and I didn't pay much attention to the indoor season last year, but I know in the outdoor, uh, Axelina Johansson won the national championship in shot put, so, and we get her back, and she did really well in the big USA track and field event over the summer, too, so, um, expect our throwers to do good. We had Rima Odebor, who, uh, I believe moved on, so, just like uh, tennis, you know, I don't know a whole lot about track and field. I love watching it. There's just so much to go over, and I go over so much as it is. But we'll do our best to uh, keep track of how the season goes. Um, so now we got wrestling. And this, guys, is my bread and butter. Uh, I wrestled in high school. I wrestled for, like, 20 years. <laughs> So, I've been around it a long time. Uh, I used to coach wrestling for a little while. Uh, youth kids, anyway. Um, but this is... If I'm good at talking about one sport, it's wrestling. And I can go for days. Um, and, I mean, even more than football. Like, wrestling is my sport. So... I might be biased at times. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But uh, 11 individual national champions, 54 NCAA national championship appearances, and seven conference championships. Uh, the, so the season starts on November 14th at North Dakota State and will be Coach Mark Manning's 24th season. So, uh, and I... I Every year, you know, I feel like he has a shot to win a national championship. Uh, I can't remember the stat. It was like 10 years in a row he finished in the top 10 or something like that. I don't know. Something crazy like that. Like, he he always coaches up a good team. And what it is, he can't recruit like Penn State or Iowa. You know, he's kind of like a Tom Osborne or uh, where he you know, gets his roster and he, like, 
built them up over the year. You know, first couple duels or so, you're like, oh, man, this team looks like they're going to suck. But then you see the guys get better. And, and I love watching that. I love watching, like, him progress his wrestlers. He does a very good job. And I think he's the, in my biased opinion, I think he is the best coach in the country because he molds who he's got. You know, Penn State and Iowa is always going to do their thing. Oklahoma State, they're they're all going to do their thing. They're always going to get the best recruits. They're, you know. But Nebraska does so good at molding their wrestlers, you know. Um, uh, you know, whenever, like, the top guy leaves, you know, and then next season you're so uncertain about that weight class, it's like, oh, man, you know, how are we going to fix it? He seems to do it. And it, so, like, 174 pounds this year, Mike Labriola left, and you know, who was a national finalist last year, you know, it's like, how are we going to replace that? But so it'll be interesting to see how he fixes that. But we'll start at 125 pounds. And um, I don't know who's going to take this spot uh, this year. Uh, you got Alan Cooler, uh, Caleb Smith, and Jacob Van D. Uh I want to say it's going to be between Van D or Smith, to be honest. So you got two freshmen and a graduate student. I I would hope the graduate student and Caleb Smith gets that spot, you know, just for sake he's, you know, this is probably the last time he's ever going to wrestle. But we'll see. We haven't been very good at 125 for some time. Uh, last... Until last year when, um, oh, who was that Indiana transfer? I forgot his name. But we had him, and he, he started making a good run at the end of the season. Uh, but other than that, uh, 125 pounds just has not been very successful for a while now, it seems like. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how that shapes up. At 133 I would guess Kyle Burwick gets the job. He was our 133-pounder last year. Um, you know, I I didn't realize he's a, only a junior, so we get him two more years. So last year I said he sucked, but I'll cut him some slack for being a, junior, uh, a sophomore last year in a pretty tough weight class. I mean, there's a lot of good wrestlers in that weight class, so... I expect Berwick to get it, uh, but you also got Drew Cooper and Hayden Mills, who are both freshmen, so one of them a fr redshirt freshman. But uh, we'll see how that shapes up. Maybe Berwick will get better. I, I was excited when we got him from Wisconsin because he was looked very promising, and he still can be. Uh, maybe he had issues last year. I don't know, but, uh, you know, if anybody can get – anybody molded it's Mark Manning and I maybe this off season he got better so we'll see about that 141 pounds I uh, I expect Brock Hardy to be our primary guy uh, who is a sophomore who had a pretty decent season last year um, especially as of late um, but that that's the weight class we got like the most guys in you got is Ismail Ayub, uh, who's a looks like a stud. Um, he's a redshirt freshman. Um, Blake Cushing, Tanner Frothinger. Uh, between that, I mean Brock Hardy should get the spot. I mean he was our primary guy last year, and I don't expect that to change. Uh, 149 pounds. What I'm most excited about. And that's because we got Ridge Love at back after redshirting last year. Um, I think this is the year we get a national champion, uh, an individual national champion, and I do believe it's going to belong to Ridge Love uh, with Yanni Diakamahalas out of the picture now from Cornell. Uh, you know, because 
the year before last, Reg Lovett wrestled him for national championship, um, but ultimately lost to Yanni. I mean, because Yanni's really good. But uh, yeah, expect big things from Reg Lovett this year. He had a year off to train and get better. And so I'm, I'm really excited to watch him. Uh, I mean, you got guys under him. They're all freshmen. That's what's really exciting. You got three freshmen in that 149 pound weight class. And so they all got to practice with Ridge. So that means they're only going to get better. You only get better in wrestling when you get your ass kicked. I mean, that's, that's how I've always seen it. You know, you're continuously getting your ass whooped. You're getting tired of it. You're trying to get better. And you do get better by getting your ass kicked. I mean, I mean, I think that's with any kind of combat sport, whether it's boxing or MMA, you know, you're just sitting there getting wailed on. So you're figuring out your inner self how to, you know, channel that, you know. So man, that 149 pound spot after Ridge Love It leaves could be pretty amazing. Um, 157 pounds, uh, Peyton Robb, um, coming back after a scary situation last year. You know, he he went undefeated all year. Uh, and then in the uh, national, well, so in the Big Ten championship, he lost to Penn State's Levi Haynes, who's great, who's going to be a good wrestler for Penn State for some time, but that looks like it's going to be a quite the rivalry um i mean this year anyway uh you got peyton rob he he wants that national title himself and it looked like he was going to get it last year and then he lost to levi haynes in the big 10 championship which put peyton rob at like seated fifth or something like that but uh there's was it day two of nationals last year i can't remember but he uh ended up like looking like shit i was sitting here going this ain't peyton rob like he's not doing good you know and the he he lost out of course and you know it's like what the hell was that all about he went undefeated all year and then he just he had like a, an infection uh on his leg he almost got his leg cut off he almost died from it like it was a serious issue and so understandably so he lost he wasn't feeling good um so this year he's gonna come back with a vengeance uh we'll see how his health is i mean i i would think he comes back and does what he did last year and hopefully nothing bad happens to him but uh yeah, the scary stuff there. Uh, he he has some underclassmen under him too. So, um, you know, Joshua Licking, Ethan Styles, Andrew Taylor, um, who's all going to be pretty promising uh, wrestlers for us. So that that'll be a fun uh, ri uh, wrestling room to watch with the 157 pounders. Uh, 165 pounds, you got Bubba Wilson, who, uh, I think he All-American last year, I can't remember. My memory sucks, but, uh, he, I know he went to the Nationals last year. Uh, you got Griffin Ray, Christopher Minto as freshman under him, and then you got Jagger Condomitti. Um, so that should be an interesting, uh line up there uh i would think after bubba wilson's time i mean he 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 gotten better as he was another one of those that's like ah oh, he's not doing very good but then he got better as season went along so i expect him to get farther than just all american uh this year we'll see um 174 pounds is a weight class i I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know who's going to be the primary guy. But uh, you got Elise Brown, who's sophomore. Ethan DeLeon, who's a 
freshman Adam DeBeau, who's also a sophomore, and Dominic DeBeau, who's a soft, uh, or freshman. So you got two brothers in there. Uh, I don't know. We'll see how that shapes up. I, I couldn't tell you anything about that one. I mean, uh, you know, you got Adam DeBeau and Elise Brown, who has one year under their belt, who had to wrestle Mikey. So I would guess it'd be between Elise Brown and Adam DeBeau. Um, but we'll see. I that that's that's gonna be a question mark for the season is the 174 pound along with the 125 uh, pound weight class. Um, so going 184 pounds, uh, you only got two guys at that weight class: Lenny Pinto and Braden Van Tassel. Uh, Lenny Pinto was our guy last year, who is so weird because. He is a freaking monster. He's so strong. And, like, he, I don't know, he he, he out-wrestles. Everybody wrestles, but then he doesn't wrestle very good. So, I, I don't know. He, he went to the NCAAs last year. So, I mean, I expect him to be our primary guy. But um, we'll see how that works out. Um uh he he's man, I I don't know I I would expect him the all American this year after a pretty good freshman season but uh we'll see how that goes I'm excited to watch him of course but um not as excited excited as uh our 197 pounder Silas Allred who had a tremendous tremendous freshman season winning the Big Ten but ultimately losing out on an all-american status at the NCAAs but you know you win the Big Ten you you, you look promising um, he went 29 and 8 uh, which you know when he first started he, you know along with a lot of other guys he started out rough but then ultimately got better and then he looked like one of the best wrestlers on the team. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for his sophomore campaign. I think he's going to do well. I think he'll All-American himself. Um, but, yeah, he last year he got a Big Ten Wrestler of the Week, went 2-2 two and two in the NCAAs, uh, numerous scholar accolades. He's a smart guy. Uh, not only smart, but he's a very good guy, uh, he had a nice spiritual upbringing. Um, so he, he's a uh, Jesus man for sure. Um, but he, he's a damn good wrestler too. So I I expect big things out of him. He's, he'll be an All-American this year for sure. Uh, and then that leaves us with the... Uh, and, uh, and actually he has nobody wrestling under him. So I mean... He's the only 197 pounder we got, so um, I expect Mark Manning to go after some 197 pounders uh, during the recruiting period. Um, so at 285 pounds, it's another uncertain weight class. We have not been very successful uh, for the past, I don't know, five, six years now in that weight class. But uh, so you got Harley Andrews, who's a freshman, and Matt Matthew Moore and Owen Pence as a junior. I would expect uh, Owen Pence to get that spot this year, uh, just by being a junior. Um, but of course they'll have to wrestle off for that. So um, oh, who was our two hundred eighty five pounder last year? He. All American for the first time ever, somehow. But um, yeah, I, it, that's going to be a total question mark for us uh, this season as uh, wrestling approaches. But uh, yeah, um, like I said, Mark Manning is a great coach. I think he's going to take us to some big heights once again this year. Uh, get some All Americans and. 
How about a top five finish, I think? Um, and I think, I mean, we have a pretty good shot at a national champion this year with Ridge Lovett, if not Peyton Rob as well. So we'll see how that works. And, I mean, who knows with Silas Allred. Maybe he'll step up too. But um, that does it for the wrestling portion of things. I'm getting off track here. Uh, that leaves us with basketball. And I guess I'll start with women's. Uh, they have two conference regular season championships, one conference tournament championship, 15 NCAA tournament appearances, five NCAA second rounds, and two sweet, sweet 16 appearances. And, of course, there's a lot of buzz about this team. Uh, everybody seems really excited, um, which I am, but I'm not because... You got freaking Caitlin Clark in Iowa once again, um, which I think they lost some players. So maybe it's just Caitlin Clark and we will be Iowa, hopefully. But there, there seems to be a lot of buzz about this team. Um, rightfully so. I mean, I think we'll do better than go on the NIT this year. I think we'll go to the NCAA tournament. Um, I mean, you got a lot of great players. You got Jazz Shelley, Kendall Moriarty, Annika Stewart, Alexis Markowski, and the young multi-sport athlete Maggie Mendelson, who will probably still be playing volleyball when the season starts because she'll be in the NCAAs in volleyball, but immediately come back for basketball. So, and I still don't, can't decide which sport she's better at. I mean, she's great at both. Um, but yeah, we're going to give the Big Ten its best shot and hopefully make some big things happen this year. Everybody seems to be high on it. Um, so I, I'm i not as much as the rest of the fan base, to be honest. But, you know, that's just me. And hopefully they prove me wrong and uh, come out with something big this year. Uh, but the season opens up on October 29th with an exhibition game against Dakota Wesleyan and a decent non-conference schedule that includes a date with the rematch of last year's NIT champion KU who beat us in the Sweet 16 at tournament. Uh, of course, November 19th, we have a game against Creighton at home. Uh, and, and, of course, the Big Ten field is strong as usual, uh, which it usually is. So, um, hopefully we get enough wins to get an NCAA berth and, I don't know, do big things in the Big Ten as well. So, look out for that. Um, so, on the men's basketball side of things, uh, 1,535 and 1,417 overall. So that's a 520 uh, winning percentage. So um, seven NCAA tournament appearances, one conference tournament championship way long ago, uh, six regular conference championships way long ago, uh, and an NIT championship. Um, but I've said from the beginning, um, I think this is going to be our best lineup ever in basketball. I really, really do. I got a lot of heat for it. Uh, you know, I got called stupid, whatever. I don't care. Uh, all I know is I hope I'm right because I think I will be. Um, but it's really not. It's really hard not to be optimistic about this team. I mean, look what we did at the end of the year last year, you know. Uh, you got Rink Mast. You got Casey Tominaga. You got Sam Hoybert. Uh, Blaze Keita. I mean, this is going to be a freaking awesome team. I, I really just feel it in my bones. I think we're going to have a successful year. I've even been told Fred Hoiberg's going to be fired after this year. You can't fire a coach if he gets better every year. You just can't, you know. Say you win one game one year. 
then you win two the next. You, you just can't fire that progress. You just cannot. Uh, that was the silliest damn thing I've ever heard. Hopefully that guy eats his words this year. Um, yeah, that... No, I, I wouldn't fire... I did, however, did not want to fire 10 miles. I think that was a stupid fire. But I think Trev Alberts is smarter than that and will keep Fred. Um, but, yeah, that, I thought that was a stupid thing I heard. Um, season will tip off on October 29th as well versus Stone. The non-conference schedule looks pretty favorable uh, until the December 3rd matchup against Creighton in which we won last year pretty one-sidedly. So uh, hopefully we can do it again this year. Um, and of course, on December 17th at Manhattan, we play K-State. Uh, I hate to say it, but I'm that, I think that's a definite loss, uh, in my opinion, because uh, what Coach Tang is doing over there is incredible. I mean... There, he's going to have a solid career at K State, or for our, for however long he's there. I he's an incredible coach, uh, you know, in just one year, just turn that thing around. So very impressive stuff by uh, Coach Tang over there. And as usual, the Big Ten slate's going to be uh, pretty tough. I mean. It's always, you know, one of the top conferences in basketball. So, um, you know, I'm not saying conference championship or national title or anything like that. But I think we will have our best assembled team ever in the history of Nebraska. And I think we will get that first tournament win ever. So... Look, uh, that's what to look forward to in fall sports this year. Uh, as our win, or excuse me, our winter sports as winter season uh, approaches us, uh, got a lot of exciting things to look forward to. Um, so with that, guys, I'm gonna close out. Uh, thanks for watching, and um, please, uh, if you like the show, like, share, comment. Uh, just keep getting the word out. And I do want to thank you all for uh, um, supporting uh, this show. And um, hopefully we get some more followers and all that good stuff. And uh, help me uh, help you, I guess. Um, so with that, guys, always remember to be excellent to each other. Go Big Red.